my dad died. When my daddy, uh, my dad, the person I call my dad, when he died, that's when the true now come out. The true of the arranged marriage now come out. My one day, it was during the Christmas time. My ex then phoned me one day, he started crying on the phone, which I did not know. Maybe by then my dad already died, but I did not know what happened earlier. That day, he just called me, he started crying on the phone. He said to me that they sent him to England to come and use him. I said they sent him to England to come and use you. A man of nearly 60 crying. And be saying that they send him to England to come and use you. I said to myself, who send you to England to come and use you? It didn't click in me. I was just saying, why is this man crying telling me? By then, we already separated. He live on his own. He live in London, but I live in outside London. When he was crying and telling me that they send him to England to come and use him, I said, who send you to England to come and use you? I, and it, during the Christmas time, a few days before the Christmas, as he was talking, as a woman being, my body could not bear he, 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 the, the word he was saying. I said, what's going on? Okay, I said, I pity him as a Christian. I said, okay, it's coming to Christmas. You can come and see us here outside London for the Christmas. That's the word I said to him. He was just keep on saying, oh, they send him here to come and use him. I didn't know that he was confessed. You see the word of God. You see how God, he, he was confessed. Oh, that's why they said one day, one day, it can take long, but one day the truth will surely come out. He was, I didn't know that he was confessed. What he was saying is, was confessed that they sent him to England to come and to come and uh, use him because when he was saying that they send him to England, I was saying to myself, Who will send you to England to come and use you? I don't understand what you are talking about. That it's coming to Christmas now, you can come and spend, say, say hello to us at Christmas. I welcome you. That is that not fair enough? As he was saying that, I said, I'm busy in the garden, I'm working in the, in the garden. That issue uh, later, I just dropped the phone. I dropped the phone and I went back to the to the garden doing what I was doing outside in the garden. A minute, not even on that, now after that, the, my, the children called me and said to me, Mom, Daddy is on the phone. I said, what does he want again? I'm busy. Can't you tell him I'm busy? I'm busy. No, 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 I'm not interested. I'm busy. They came back. They said, no, he said, but Grandpa, they said, Grandpa died. I said, which Grandpa died? Which grandpa, I was so in shock. I just look up to heaven and said, God, your word is true and it's amen. Then I, the mistake I did is I did not, uh, my uh, family in Nigeria, because my daddy went on all this in Nigeria, that's where he died. And then the family said they couldn't get through to me. Maybe it's a signal problem, but later on they managed to get through to him. But the mistake I did is I didn't ask them the time they phoned him for me to be able to find out, to know. If he know earlier before he, he, he phoned me to tell me. Because in their secret society, in their occultists, they know if one another that They know. He may have already know that this man is going to die. Let him now speak at all. He already died. That's why he's speaking at which I did not know. I just know not far a minute after that that he called me and told me that my my sister just phoned him that my daddy has died. You can see how it is. If you do tie somebody down that the marriage that is not made from God, it will not last. You all that are tie, using power of darkness on fellow or friendship. To marry somebody to do all kind of things. Remember, the the what you are using is just for temporary. It will not last. You can use my own experience now as my past experience. I'm putting on the table for you. I open my heart for you. I welcome you into my home, into my heart. 
that's to save you so that you too will not fall into wrong marriage uh, relationship. If you use power of darkness on somebody, it will be for a short time, and at the end, you will cry, you will look for hell, you will look for death, not even hell, you will look for death on earth to take you quick. Because the marriage wasn't from God, because they used power of darkness, there's a time God showed me this revelation after we separate. I saw like a white wrapper was tying myself and him together, and I saw the white rope was off from our body. He fly away. Because the marriage wasn't from God, because they used something to tie it, and what they used to tie it was it, it flow away. If you are married, make sure you marry the right person. Make sure you go to God in prayer for God to direct you to the right marriage. A lot of broken marriage, a lot of broken family out there. People doesn't pray to have a bro broken family, but one thing or the other fall upon one thing or, or one thing out of the other. That's why I'm giving you this message so that I can be able to help you and save you ahead. Even especially most you young people, I go into marriage during my youth. I married in my, in my youth, in my 20s. That's why I'm telling you now, please, so that you too will not fall into that that kind of relationship. You too will not fall into that pain. Your parents may be telling you now, and then later you think, oh, what are they talking? Please pray to God so that you don't have bad marriage. Pray to God to direct you to the right marriage, to direct you to the right uh, person. If you go to the mental home, a lot of people, few people, especially most especially ladies, breaking hearts because of marriage problem. Some of them are in mental homes, some of them are institutions, all kind of places. Some of them in prison, maybe because they are fighting, because jealous between one another, they stab one another, they kill one another. Before you go further by killing one another, why can't you just move back and separate and say no? Before you start killing, shooting, doing evil against one another, why can't you give each one another a break to move back a little? Before you go deep, please, I'm begging in the name of Jesus. Before you go deep, before you go deep into marriage, please be careful. Be careful. Don't look at somebody from their face. Look through to their heart. Love is from the heart, not from the mouth. Any love that comes from the mouth doesn't last. You can know from the heart if somebody loves you. And the same love you share between one another, it lifted one another up. That's what they call pure love. Love lifted one another up. Please, I'm begging you in the name of Jesus. Before you said, I do. Before you said, I do, please. And those people that you see them out there, that they, they have a broken marriage or they are separate, not that you that are married, not that you are better than them, no. Not that they are evil, that's why they have a broken marriage, no. Broken marriage can happen because people think that person loves me. They, those people that even have a broken marriage, their heart is more heavier than those that are married. Because why is their heart so heavier? They are in pain. They are in pain because they put their trust in somebody that failed them. They put their trust in somebody that failed them, that they, sh they lift, took their heart out of their body and give it to somebody. But for the person not to, to connect their love together, that's where the love fails. Love is from the heart, not from the mouth. True love, you can see, it lasts forever. When you see a, some policemen, interview them, they will tell you how many violence in marriage that they interview, how many people in marriage that they are in prison, maybe they stab one another, they kill one another, because I said, why do they need to go deep into killing? When you watch some of the mystery on the TV, reality, some of the program, I like to watch, watch something history, something that happened, documentary. When you watch some of the documentary, you see people killing one another. I said, why does it need to come deep to be killing one another? Why can't you just live and separate and then, then stabbing, shooting, killing? I said, why do they need to go further, further that deep into that?
No, that's that's evil. That's hundred percent evil. You don't need to kill and stab one another. Some people kill, some people stab one another, maybe because of the because of money or because of the the inherit the inherit, inherit among one of them. You don't need to do that as a child of God. That's not love. You don't need to kill one another. Some of them will say, because I can't bear it again. I can't bear it again. That's why I stab him. That's why I stab her. He's been arresting me. He's been doing this to me for over 30 something years, for over 22 something years. When they go to court, the court will listen to their word, but at the end, the court is still going to blame you. I've watched it, I've listened to judge, and when they are talking, and this is what they are going to tell you. And this is what I'm telling you. They will say to you, why can't you move back when you know that it's, it's, it's getting worse, that it's killing you, it's beating you. Why can't you move out than you stabbing he or she, than you killing he or she, that you say self-defense. Self-defense, you don't need to kill one another to say you are self-defense. That's not self-defense. If it's, if it's beating you, if it's killing you, and you get a cancel, counselor and see here there's no improvement, then you got to give he space for here to breathe in. you got to separate, you got to move out and then let the wind blow so that you, w there won't be blood in your hand. The courts have seen it, uh, they interview people, they have seen it, they will be telling, the lawyer will be telling them, why do you need to stab? Why do you need to kill? And we said, I can't be it. I said, if you know you can't be it, why can't you move out? Why can't you do something? Then you don't need to stab them or you don't need to kill them. This is what we call marriage. Did they plan that before they said I do? No. They did not plan it before they said they do. Because they have... They the agony, the pain, they, they are carried, they can't bear it, they just vomit it out. And that's when they start killing and shooting and stabbing one another. I'm begging you in the name of Jesus, before you said I do, pray to God so that you don't choose the wrong way, so that at the end you will not blame yourself. I'm giving you this message so that you can be able to learn. The marriage that I'm, I married, it was arranged marriage. Even if it's arranged marriage alone, it could have been nice without any power or darkness. But my involved the only my involved secret to those who are in secret society in my family, with my ex I in secret society, they put hand together and and form the marriage for me. But at the end God separated. Even God before that God has been talking but I just thinking oh, what's this? It's just ordinary dream. There's a time I was sleeping, I think I hear God say, It is finished. It is finished. I said, it is finished. I don't know what's, what's going on. When God said it is finished. There's a time I was sleeping in my dream. I saw my ass. It came and it was shocking me. Like it, it was nearly shocking me that I nearly died. That I just pushed him away and I wake. After a couple of days, that's when I decided to find a room for him downstairs. I said, God, maybe this man is planning. What is planning is only God knows. There's a time I went to, that's not my first time in Israel, I think it was my, that was my second time in Israel. I saw a group of some white women that we met on the coach there in Israel. But by then I went with my children. Then, it, when we were in Israel, um, a woman then, it's a group of old white women, they are in their 70 or 80. They said to me, they just said to me, how are you? Am I fine? I said, yes, I'm fine. They said to me, how is the children father? I said, yeah, everybody's fine. I did not know that God was the one speaking to speaking to them. God was using their mouth to talk. I did not know. I just said, it's fine. After some time, I think I sit down in the hotel. I was thinking, why are they asking me? How is, the, how is my how is the father of those children? And I said, it's fine. I just said, no, I just said, before we board the plane from uh, Israel, coming back to London, Heathrow, I was, I was in the plane sitting down before the plane lifted up from Israel airport. As I was sitting down, go, I just saw a picture of Jesus Christ when he was on the cross, when he did like this. It is finished with the cloud on his head. He just did like this. I just saw the picture as I was sitting down. 
as I was sitting down in the plane, waiting for the, we are sitting down, people are boarding the plane. I just saw Jesus on the cross like this. He put his hand down when he said, it is finished. But I couldn't understand it. I didn't, I was just thinking it's just ordinary thing. I didn't even take it serious. I just think it's just an ordinary vision. After that, that's when I went back home. That's when, after that, uh, when we arrived in England, I didn't even take anything serious. I just can't take it just ordinary. My dear, after that, for nearly over six and a half months, I did not know God was telling me to break that marriage. I did not know God was telling me that marriage is not from him. That there is a plan that the devil has for me. For nearly six months, I could not go out of the door. If I want to buy things, I need to be sending the children to get it for me on their way coming from school. All what I have, the property, everything I have in Nigeria, I need to sell it to use the money there to be feeding myself here in England. I used to be size 22 to size 24. I become size 12 for size 10. My daughter coat size 10 is what I put on. A day that I put the coat on that I went out, my neighbor saw me and said, are you here selling? What I've been through after I came back from Israel, uh, the, I went 2000, uh, 2007. When I came back, it's unbelievable. God sends two women to speak to me in Israel. They, they are not today, but three old white women. But I don't understand what they are saying. In the plane, I saw Jesus Christ on the cross before the plane left. Yeah, left um, uh, Israel here airport. I saw Jesus on the cross like this. I was just thinking, and uh, that's just. Jesus. Before I travel to Israel, I think yeah, before I travel, I heard in my sleep at home it is finished. But I didn't count it. I didn't know what's going on. I didn't know God was telling me that that marriage was been from him. Children of God, what I've been through, what I go through for 2007 through 2008 is a thing that it's only God. My feet can enter the outside my house. If I want to throw the bin, we have a big bin outside. I will stand at the edge of the door and throw the bin out. One day in my front entrance of the door, I bend down to lift down my head like this to pick something up. It's like something was on the floor that my head nearly come out of my body. My head the kind of headache I have, my head nearly come out of my body. Just in front of my, in front of the ass of the door, I just want to bend down to pee something. My head nearly come out of my body. But to God be the glory, God deliver me. After this man left my life, to th then after that, in 2009, we separate. God deliver me, God. God hear my prayer. God and my spirit and those that do evil and there is another a Christian radio that I used to watch, watch it's called a premier Christian radio. Those four things are the ones that can testify to what I'm saying. The radio, I put it on so that my spirit can be able to hear the word of God, so that my spirit can be able to cry to God, so that God can hear me. I put the radio on, especially when they are preaching. I said, let the spirit hear the preaching of God in me. Let my spirit hear the spirit of God in me. From size 22, 24 to size 10, you can know that it's, it's, not, a, it's not a small battlefield. But to God be the glory. Look at it today. God healed me. God delivered me. He came from heaven to set me free. After this man left my life, I started doing my ministry. I started going to the train station. I started giving out leaflets. I started doing all kinds of things to the glory of God. When he was with me, I can't do all that. I told him when he was with me, I said, I'm going to have a, have a shop in Nigeria to be selling Bible and giving out. 
and doing ministry. He said to me, that's what your mates are doing. You can see it was sent to me to block my destination, to block my destiny. But because my destiny can never be destroyed. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 was upon my life. And that's why I'm still alive today. But not everybody has the mercy of that. It's only by God's mercy that I have mercy to spare my life. You, your own line may be different from that. Not everybody come out of the lion and be the same again. Please, before you said I do, before you said I do, be careful. Don't just jump into a marriage. Marriage is not a toy. Marriage life is not a toy that you can just think, oh, just like that, just like that. Please be careful. If you go to mental home, if you go to the hospital, I've worked in those lines before, I know what I'm talking about. You will see people in mental home. Why? Because of breakdown marriage. Please. Some in, in, the, in the prison, they kill, they stab their husband, they stab their wife, they kill their husband because they can't be it. Some kill their wife because they can't be it. Before you step, step into killing one another, why can't you move back? They're not having blood in your hand. Why can't you move back than having blood in your hand? And before you go deep now, this message comes to you so that you should pray to God so that God can choose the right person for you. You ask God that the person you want to choose, you want to marry, please God, let your will be done so that you don't go into the wrong marriage. And God will surely help you because He knows your heart. He will direct you. When I was young, before I married, I don't ask God. I didn't even pray to God anything about praying to God. No, I didn't even know that you need to pray to God to about marriage. About marriage, I didn't know all these things. Please be careful. I, sh I gave you my heart now so that you can be able to learn from those that pass that road. Please be careful. Be 